Greetings sailors and welcome back to World of Warships and a Patreon replay. I've actually been sitting on this one for like a week and a half, but um, have I mentioned that I'm rubbish? I think I may have mentioned that once or twice. It's not even like I can have the excuse of I got really caught up playing some other game. I've just kind of been, I don't know, struggling to do much of anything, really. Vegetating, <laughs> I guess. Sam hasn't complained. If I'm napping on the sofa, he comes and lies on my lap, so, you know, I, I, I've been a good uh, heating pad for my cat. Got that going for me, at least. Uh, any, anyway, I, I, I had some sort of thing mapped out in my head for saying at the start of this, and I forgot what it was now. Oh yes, now I remember. So, um, yeah, this is Martin Ludins. He's in the Gallant, which is the, the premium tier 6 destroyer. And, well, let's just say he seems to rather more be in the mindset of a tribal class captain with how we're going to see him playing here. It's decent matchmaking overall in that it's a top tier game, but it's less good in that there are two submarines and a CV to worry about, and the submarines especially add potentially a fair bit of extra workload to a destroyer, that extra stuff that you have to worry about, and you're already at the sharp end of things in a destroyer, generally speaking, so to have to deal with subs on top of that is always a bit of a pain. This enemy, uh, Icarus though, the, uh, the tech tree counterpart, um, is fairly similar in capabilities, but of course they do have different style smoke screens, and uh, because Gallant came first, it has the more standard destroyer setup of a uh, uh, speed boost, or a speed beast, if you will. I'd almost forgotten about that until just this moment for some reason. Uh, whereas, of course, the uh, the tech tree destroyers are equipped with the defensive sonar instead and uh, have much shorter cooldowns on their smoke screens. So it it plays a bit differently, but it's a, a decent enough destroyer at tier six. It's got a fairly usable torpedo range. The torpedoes are decent. The firepower is okay. It's only got the four single turrets, uh, as did quite a lot of the uh, the interwar classes, and the calibre gun. I mean, the one twenty mil guns are. Is it even the one twenty mil? That's the four point seven, isn't it? I, it gets confusing with destroyer calibers. I think it was the four point seven guns on these, not the four point five. I think the four point fives were later. I can't remember, but yeah, the uh, the. The guns are, you know, they're destroyer guns, they don't have a particularly high fire chance. This is where things are getting a bit crazy, though, a bit, a little bit pants on head, in that rather than stealthing up and trying to position for doing torpedo things, as one might assume one would do in this position, yeah, instead, like I said, he is cosplaying as a World War II tribal captain and just running around shooting at all the things, even though it's not necessarily the most sensible thing to be doing. Now we did pull attention away from that allied submarine, that may have been the thought there, and that allied submarine was able to do some decent damage, but that allied sub is also basically beyond helping at this point. They're right under, what, two, three ships? So uh, yeah, there was a limited amount that uh, Martin Ludens could do there really, but uh, you know, those those ships have been weakened, damage has been done, although he doesn't get any credit for that, of course. And now he's turned his attention to this Repulse, who is so fixated on whatever it is that they're aiming at right now, possibly the Durflinger, that they don't even register the destroyer running parallel and shooting at them, and are only now starting to manoeuvre. It's not going to stop them from eating a torpedo, though. In fact, two torpedoes. God bless inattentive destroyer, not destroyer, battleship captains uh, when you're in uh, a destroyer and um, well I suppose god bless uh, the inverse when you're in a battleship. <laughs> so you might be thinking here, okay he's stealthed up, this repulse is flooding but Martin can't help himself, he opens fire anyway and then at this point decides in for a penny, in for a pound 
and decides to keep firing at this Mutsu who has been able to repair some of the damage that they took. Okay then, um, yeah, like I said, cosplaying as a tribal captain. The Mutsu is paying a lot more attention than the Repulse was, and so this becomes a case of can he beat the Mutsu's reload? And if the Mutsu is any good, they are reloading those big, chunky 16 inch guns with, well, not even 16 inch, 16.1, uh, 16 isn't it? It's the 410s on the Mutsu and uh, Nagato. Reloading them with high explosive and they're also now he's also now close enough that his secondaries are unloading at martin as well and oh yes of course also mutsu has torpedoes so there we go there's the high explosive and martin takes a huge watch of damage decides to maybe use his smoke after all <laughs> And, uh, well, fortunately there's nothing nearby with Hydro that he has to worry about. But, yeah, oh look, there's yet another thing firing high explosive at him. So, yeah, this could have gone a lot better. It really could have. And the Koenig has a, a much faster reload as well. So, yeah, that is a Koenig, right? I can just about see on my screen. So, finally having lost about... What is that? Three quarters of his health? He suddenly decides, maybe I will be a little more cautious at this point. Maybe I will take the underpants off my head for a while. He does get some good hits in on that Mutsu, though, who uh, was in a decent position to actually basically keep turning away and miss. But no, they sort of turned around. Uh, but then Martin, well, he spotted again briefly, uh, but fortunately <laughs> doesn't really take too much more damage in the process. And he's now in a position where, well, he's got multiple options. He could maybe go after that destroyer, or he could go for the New York. Um, but I think he's quite wary of the fact that there's the aircraft buzzing overhead, giving his position away. It's going to make getting on top of, uh, unless the the submarine is actively pinging, he's basically got his radio location to go on and I, I don't actually even know offhand if that works with subs and of course if he gets close enough to get um, uh, proximity spotted by the submarine then those two battleships are going to be very keen to have a word with him. So all this running around has managed to get him just shy of 100k damage which is pretty good going but he really does not have the health to be anything like as bold anymore so i think what he's decided to do is angle through the b cap to maybe set himself up for a drop on the new york because it's fairly slow and those two battleships i mean this is me guessing here but those two battleships are going to be much more wary about him now potentially dropping on them given that they have themselves already been attacked by him multiple times, whereas this New York has not. Sometimes going after a fresh target is a good idea because they're not expecting it, basically. And if somebody is trying to transit from one area of the map to the other, and they don't necessarily know that there's going to be a destroyer nearby, they're absolutely not, in theory, going to be taking the same evasive precautions. So there goes the torpedoes. He could pop a smoke screen here um, because if he does open fire right now, he's going to get spotted. But that potentially might foul his torpedoes. And here's where he makes a mistake because maybe he doesn't notice that the planes are there, but he is going to open fire and that does get him spotted. And it's not even air spotted. So potentially that's the enemy submarine that was last up. Uh, spotted in the A cap that is now seeing him and you can actually see his radio location is pinging somewhere to his north but fortunately the New York does not respond quickly enough and he does manage to get the kill anyway. He also potentially had to be worried a little bit there about the Serov going after him. There is however the mild advantage if we can call it that with the Serov that they cannot 
both make an attack and keep their aircraft circling to keep a target spotted at the same time. The only real way they have of doing that is by deploying a fighter. Of course, fighters are a lot easier to shoot down. Although, having said that, tier 6 destroyer AA generally isn't great. But, of course, if you still have some attack planes that are left alive, generally they're going to be a lot more durable and you have the chance of uh, trying to make a, another drop. But the Serov, of course, can't. Anyway, so, like I said, minor advantage, but it, it's not even really going to matter because the, the CV has largely ignored him and will continue to largely ignore him for this, uh, this match, which is always nice when you're a destroyer. So there's one of the enemy subs down. They had run out of dive capacity, got caught on the surface, and basically were trying to make a go at killing the Ryuzhou, but they didn't manage to finish them off. They did some damage. All that's left now of the enemy team is the other sub. These two battleships who have made their way over from the 10 line. And actually having, I said, I spoke too soon. I'd forgotten the sub actually did finish off the Ryuzhou. Uh, and the enemy CV is, of course, somewhere as well. So they're both very low health at this point, but uh, he's finally being sensible. I think it's the first time we see him use a smoke screen just to sit in it and uh, pew pew. He did pew pew a little bit from that earlier smoke screen, but that was also partly so he could turn around and get away rather than just sitting firing at targets. There's no danger of these uh, ships being unspotted, though. And so we can just sit and uh, have a go. And he's actually trying to switch to his AP as well, which can work reasonably well if you like that salvo there. Like if you have a target with decent superstructure to go for. And now he set a fire as well. Um, yeah, he maybe felt that was the more reliable way to do damage to a, a broadside battleship. But it really does only work for the, the superstructure. And like I said, some battleships it, it just kind of doesn't. Soviet battleships particularly are a bit of a pain to deal with because the superstructure is uh, generally quite limited. So just this Koenig left and there's the torpedoes out. This time the Koenig has to be aware that the angry smoke cloud has almost certainly dropped torpedoes against them but they don't seem to be in any special hurry to take evasive maneuvers. I really don't know why. And that is going to be their doom. Uh, although they do take uh, torpedo damage from the, uh, the Galassonier as well. Uh, I think that was anyway. It was coming from that side rather than the uh, surviving uh, the other surviving destroyer. Uh, so yeah, the, um, the Koenig, I guess they just knew they were going to go down and were trying to chase a bit of damage out of the Galasson. Yeah, I don't know. Anyhow, we are now down to two enemy ships. They have firmly overtaken the enemy team in terms of points, which was looking a bit dicey for a while. Maybe that's why Martin Ludens was, uh, was, was playing quite so aggressively at times, because it, it was looking a bit ropey at points in terms of the, the victory points. But no, they are now basically winning. Uh, there's only a couple of minutes left, but there's, I don't think there's really any realistic way for the enemy team to, to come back now. Matsuki may be able to get this, this uh, remaining enemy sub, but they don't seem to be... I don't know. I don't know if they are speed boosting and it's just hard to see from here uh, or if they're... Like, to be fair, Matsuki's got really crap guns. Maybe they're firing and it's just at such a low rate of fire that we can't tell, or they're manoeuvring and the turrets just can't keep up. I don't know. Like I said, Matsuki's guns are absolutely god-awful. Uh, and as it's going to turn out, well, uh, this sub, this U69, is in fact going to get to shotgun this Matsuki. Uh, and, well, that means that this is potentially an extra kill for Martin, which would bring him to five kills, and he's much more likely to be able to, there we go, get that kill, which he managed to get with a fire, than he is to chase and get the Serov, who is now being polished off by the Gallus on the air. So there we go. Quite a close game. And it's ended up being a really good result, both the Kraken Confederate and Top Gun. Nearly 140k damage, which even top tier in a tier 6 game, I think, 
that's pretty good going and easily top of the team as well. Although the Galasonia did all right, the Mitsuki actually did all right as well. I think the Mitsuki may have gotten a decent number of torpedo hits because it does at least have okay torpedoes for being tier five. It's just, it has absolutely crap guns and basically no way of countering aircraft. So, you know, the Masuki alone also did not do too badly. I would maybe be interested in seeing what damage they did. So there we go. That was absolutely not cautious gameplay, <laughs> at least at the start. But once he ran out of health, he was kind of forced to be a bit more cautious and play a bit more sensibly. And really, it all ended up working out rather nicely. I personally would have been a lot more cautious all the way through, but that's just how I play. And with a result like that, well, yeah, we think we can say Martin had a, a pretty big impact on the outcome of that match. So, pat on the back. So that's it for this replay, hopefully you enjoyed it, and if you did, you can do all the usual things down underneath the video, and of course, as always, stay tuned for more.